Hi, I'm the Space Case. Today I have another one of these spice racks because I'm accumulating a lot of paint, so I need more paint storage. So I'm going to do the Galaxy technique on them on this as well so it matches my other one but I'm actually going to record doing the galaxy technique on this this time but I do have to prep it with black first so I'm going to do that and then leave it sit while I watch football and then I'm going to come back and do the galaxy technique later so what we're going to do is hit the shuffle and smock up bitches I'm gonna use a foam brush. How random is it that Mick Jagger's in this song with Will I Am and J Lo? I really do like this beat drop though. Hold on, I'm gonna restart this. A very common theme seen in what I'll describe as therapy culture is the need to break cycles in order to heal, grow, and create positive change. Cycles can be thought processes, behaviors, relationships, whatever, or just our individual toxic traits because we all have them. Breaking these cycles doesn't always have to be something major. That's usually just how we tend to think of it because it's become so synonymous with systemic issues, shame, loss, and grief. Every broken cycle means saying goodbye to something that you once thought was right for you, you took comfort in, or was just what you knew. Cycle breaking is fucking hard. That's why so many people give up and opt to keep the peace or just deal with it. Just random Mick Jagger. Because why? Who knows? Yeah. In reality, the loss associated with breaking the cycles is often just the people that encouraged, enabled, or contributed to those cycles and various other toxic traits and behaviors. Hi, so we're back and I'm going to do the galaxy technique on this second spice rack, but it's going to be interesting because I'm running out of all of the usual colors that I normally use. So I have a couple substitutes that I'm going to try, but we're going to see how it goes and see how close it turns out. So smock up bitches. We're going to hit the shuffle and then shake it like a Polaroid picture. Usually cycle breakers end up as outcasts for withdrawing from the patterns, which upsets the dynamics of relationships. Another common concept present in therapy culture is those who get mad about boundaries are usually the ones that benefited from you not having any. Hurt people hurt people. That's how the cycles have not only continued, but festered over time. Breaking cycles usually doesn't happen as a mass awakening. Oh, actually, this African violet, I think, might work on its own. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Usually happens when one gets traumatized enough to seek help. And it's often the family scapegoat. No matter who it is, they're more likely to get mutinied and shamed. Or they'll leave on their own. Because in the words of Nick Kroll's character, Ruxin, from The League... Some things you just can't unsee, bro. I read somewhere that millennials, particularly elder ones like me, comprise the largest population of cycle breakers. But we often get a bad rap for being entitled and kind of snowflakey. We were raised by the people who were really the first to normalize divorces and also fought for rock music, lobbied against segregation, and denounced war while dropping acid. Ask your parents if they ever drove drunk in the 70s and listen to the panic in their voice when they say it was common for the time. It was never right, but if everyone did it, it wasn't a huge deal, right? It took too many unnecessary deaths and accidents for it to be acknowledged as a problem. When organizations like MAD started advocating, while most of us were babies and our parents were new and started thinking, what if it were us? Things started to change. When you know better, you do better. And when a lot of people aren't confronted with the harmful realities, they think nothing of it. 
This cycle may still be broken, but there is a bigger chunk out of it now than there was previously. The shame aspect comes from feeling like we should have known better. In some cases, it even comes from knowing better and not feeling like you've done enough, if anything. We're still combating the fallout from the generations of don't talk about it in a generation that talks too much. And the number of people talking about it it's in a helpful, constructive to... way are still very few in number by comparison. In my personal situation, I had gotten to a point in my healing journey where very few things that were significant to my life previously still aligned with who I was. I could see where there were massive chunks out of both the foundations of my environment and the one I had oh, built myself on. Laser in a row. Have you heard the phrase, if Shit. a flower doesn't grow, do you cut it or check the soil? When I checked the soil of my own life, I realized there were a lot of things making me unhappy that I didn't need to participate in or put up with just because I thought I had to. Because that's the way it's always been. Because that's what I had been told. If it's a different world now, why aren't we updating the quote unquote way? And why are we so intent on either staying the same or taking things to the opposite extreme? Where is the middle ground? A lot of what I saw happening in my situation was really cycles coming back around and me choosing to do things differently. Okay, well, good thing this is the back. I'm gonna switch to the other glow in the dark pink because I think I'm actually out now of this one. But it's fairly, it's close-ish. I realized I had encountered this all before and previously I hadn't handled any of it right or even calm. But I had done better every time. And I promised myself this would be the last time I'd put myself through this and these toxic cycles were ending with me. I chose to break the cycle when I realized, in one of my situations at least, that yeah, right. I was the last one who would be able to. Not because any non-performative foundational changes had been made, but because it's easier to cover up the cracks with a new crop too afraid to speak out who don't have the years of experience. So determined to prove they're different and won't turn into one of the villains in the past. They don't know all of those villains were really scapegoats. Every one of them. I was the same way when I was in their position. Mark Ronson is actually a musical genius. And I love a lot of the things that he does, even if it's creative and wacky and weird. And he's behind some of our most famous artists, most eccentric work. But it's all bops. Like... The fact that he was in on Uptown Funk doesn't even surprise me because everything he does is funky as fuck. So I love it. When I listen to this song, I feel like I should be on an island somewhere. I don't know why. And that approach is exactly how I got myself into the situation that came to be. Impressionable and is susceptible to being manipulated the same way I was, especially when they see anyone else who's tried get treated and cast out and villainized. They are at high risk to experience the same things, even if it's packaged differently. But do you know what cycle breakers really stand for? Positive change and normalizing repercussions for those who actually contribute to the problem rather than those calling it out, saying this ends with me, but I refuse to be the sacrifice. In my case, my mission is no more traumatized kids. So I've decided to be the leader and advocate that I never had. With great power comes great responsibility. So be the change, baby. And I love how this spice rack turned out and it fits right in. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, keep the peace and keep rocking on.